A long time ago, a Yoruba kingdom in western Nigeria had a princess called Adeshua. She was the second daughter of the king and the queen. She was not considered to be as pretty or as attractive as her four sisters and other princesses in general. Her figure was also something that drew attention to her in a bad way. She was fat and some even described her to be as round as a ball. She lacked all the features that people of their time considered to be signs of beauty. When she went out with her friends or sisters, men and princes hardly ever paid her any attention, not even out of sympathy. But they always showered her friends and sisters with all the attention and praise. To make matters worse, Adeshua often overheard her parents, relatives, and visitors describe her with heartbreaking words like the fat one, the black one. Sometimes, in discussions, she'd hear something like, oh, we weren't talking about that one. We are talking about the pretty one. Once, she even heard someone refer to her as the ugly one. As a princess, her parents, the king and queen, ensured that she and her sisters had the finest education, especially because the king and the queen didn't have a male heir. Because Adishwa felt she was not attractive, she decided to throw herself completely into studies at an early age. She felt since she wasn't getting at any attention because of her looks, she could get attention and acceptance for being brilliant. And in time, she succeeded. She became one of the most brilliant young royals and news of her accomplishments spread far and wide. But sadly, Adeshua had already grown up with the consciousness that she wasn't deserving of any form of attention because she wasn't pretty or attractive. This affected her self-esteem and it showed in how she carried herself and her expectations from life, especially in the area of relationships. While other princesses openly discussed their desires to marry handsome princes, Adishwa never participated in such conversations because she believed that men of that caliber would never be attracted to her. People came to respect Adishwa for her knowledge and brilliance, but she still didn't get advances from men or romantic interests. One day, a festival was to be held in their kingdom. It was a big event. Everyone from their kingdom and even royals from other kingdoms were going to be in attendance. But the king was so sick that he, he would not be able to participate. So instead of his wife, the queen, or any of the other chiefs, the king asked Adeshua to address the people on his behalf. Because he trusted her deep knowledge of their culture, her emotional intelligence, her brilliance, and her ability to lead, all of which she had learned through her diligence in study. Atishwa was excited. She was finally being noticed and appreciated for something. Atishwa spent three days working on her speech, giving it all her attention and skill. The day of the festival came, and Adeshua sat on the king's throne. It caused whispers and tongue wagging among the crowds. Visitors and people who had never seen her before asked, Who is that woman wearing royal attire and sitting on the king's throne? I think she's the king's wife because all that fat must have been caused by childbirth. Some said, and others said that even though she was wearing royal clothes, she couldn't possibly be a princess as princesses were always perfect and pretty. All the murmurings were soon cut short by the loud and intricate rhythm of the talking drums that were played to announce her readiness to address the gathering. The work she put in her speech was obvious from her delivery. 
she made sure she captured the essence and symbolism of the festival, the beauty of the people, and the significance of their gathering. Every word and the manner in which she said it spoke to the heart of the people. She spoke for an hour and she left everyone spellbound. No one wanted her to finish because they were marveled by how much wisdom and knowledge she had gathered at such a young age. Even the members of the king court were struck with awe. She delivered with so much grace poise and love for the people that it mesmerized everyone in attendance. When she was done, the whole place went so silent that you could hear a pin drop. Adishwa feared for a moment that she had done badly and almost began to shake from within. Oh my God, I must have embarrassed father. Why are they all looking at me so quietly? But from nowhere, the crowd erupted into a loud cheer, thunderous clapping and great rejoicing. The whole kingdom was proud to have such a brilliant princess. Many even suggested that she was fit to be a queen and even rule a kingdom. While the people continued their festivities in high spirits, the royals socialized with one another. Many congratulated Adeshua and praised her for her brilliance. They wined and dined through the evening, and as the night progressed, it was time for everyone to dismiss. Adeshua was making her way to the king's quarters when she felt a cold hand grab her wrist from behind. Excuse me, Princess Adeshua, the voice came from behind her. She was startled and turned to see what or who had grabbed her wrist. She saw a face she had never seen before. A dark, handsome young prince whose radiance set him apart from everyone she had seen that evening. He was adorned in regal attire that bore the symbols of his royal lineage. His presence was both regal and approachable. Adeshua gazed at him and her heart began to beat faster. He carried himself with so much grace that reminded her of the flowing rivers that traversed their kingdom, and for that moment, he had her rapt attention. As she looked into his eyes, she sensed a perfect blend of intelligence and warmth. As they both locked eyes with each other, Adishwa felt a spark of connection like what she had never felt before. But she quickly snapped out of it and looked at him with a stern face. Yes, how can I be of assistance to you? She answered. He smiled and said, I am Prince Tunde from Ife. I've been trying to get your attention all day without any luck. Oh, I'm sorry. Is anything the matter? If you need to see the king... Before she could conclude that sentence, Tunde politely cut her off by saying, Oh, it's nothing of that sort. I was deeply moved by your speech today and wanted to meet you to appreciate you in person. I have long heard tales of beauty and grace, but nothing could have prepared me for the radiance I experienced today. May I have the honor of speaking with you just for a moment? Adishwa couldn't believe what she had heard. She glanced behind her to confirm he was indeed addressing her and not someone else. She even pinched herself to ensure she wasn't dreaming. And she stylishly looked down at her wrist to confirm if she had magically become slim and attractive all of a sudden. Adishwa was lost in her thoughts and didn't realize that she had left the prince's question unanswered. I apologize if I have said anything wrong, Princess Adishwa, Tunde commented. Oh no, you haven't. Can we sit in the garden? It's been a really long day. And so, they sat and got to know each other more. They thoroughly enjoyed their conversation and each other's company. What began as a few minutes quickly transformed into a few hours, 
marking the start of their beautiful courtship filled with meaning, love, and heartfelt conversations. After a while, talks were going about about Tunde bringing his people to officially ask for Adeshua's hands in marriage. One afternoon, Tunde came to visit Adeshua and as usual, they sat in the garden. Adeshua tried to lay her head on his shoulder as she usually did, but he shrugged and adjusted his attire. Oh, I'm sorry, Tunde, you must be very tired. Forgive me. I am not really tired, just not in the mood. Besides, I've told you before that you are heavy. Are you trying to give me a hunchback with all that weight? Tunde replied harshly. Adeshua tried to hide her embarrassment by switching to another topic. How is your kingdom? How are your people doing? She asked while trying to put a smile on her face. This is one of the many problems I have with you. When are you going to shed this excess weight? You don't seem to remember that I am a very handsome prince with many beautiful princesses clamoring for my attention. You should sit up if you want us to remain together. Adeshua was shocked by what she had just heard. Her heart sank as she simultaneously felt a pain in her stomach. Tunde had been saying such things in the past, but that day he sounded even more cruel than usual. Adeshua quickly recollected herself thinking, he must be having a hard time with something. Let me try to calm him down. My prince, you know I told you before that despite the fact that I eat just the same amount as my sisters, I still manage to put on all this weight. I will inquire from the royal herbalist if there is anything more I can do. She said as she tried to reach for his hands. But he angrily pushed her hand away and said, There shall be no more of this nonsense until you get serious about shedding all that weight. You are not even pretty. Just very average looking, yet you are still overweight. You don't even care about improving your looks at all. Everyone knows a woman's intellect cannot compensate for her looks. You are lucky I chose to remain with you all this while, but your actions show that you, are, you aren't even grateful to have me. Tunde spoke so harshly to her. Ever since Tunde realized that Adishua didn't feel confident because of her looks, he began to look down on her and treat her with little amount of love and respect. Yet, Adeshua put up with it because she felt that if the relationship wasn't working, it was all her fault. So she put every blame on herself and tried everything to make Tunde happy while making herself uncomfortable. Deep down, she believed that she was lucky to have Tunde and if he ever left her, she didn't think she could get another person. But the arguments and insults had become too much, so much that Adeshua couldn't remember the last friendly or romantic moment they had together. The weight of the whole situation weighed Adeshua down. She went blank for a moment. As she closed her eyes with heart-wrenching pain, the tears she had been fighting off dropped to her chest. The memories of the past few months flashed before her eyes like a movie. She saw the many heartaches, the nights she spent crying because of things Tunde said or did, the many apologies she deserved but never got, and how she had bent herself so much trying to please him, and how unhappy she had become while investing all her time worrying about how she could make Tunde happy. She had completely lost herself trying to please him, but things had only grown worse. At that moment, she realized that she could never be perfect to Tunde, and then she suddenly found the courage to speak up. You know what, Tunde? I love you enough to want the best for you, but it appears I can never be that person you want. You are free to pick from any of the beautiful princesses clamoring for your attention. 
you can tell your family that there is no need to come to ask for my hand in marriage. Tunde laughed. What is it that you think you are doing? You will remain unmarried forever. No man will come for you. Yes, I have thought about that too. I may not be what most men want, but I've realized that it's better to be single and happy than to be with someone who doesn't appreciate me. Tunde continued to laugh. You will never find anyone to love you. Oh, you are wrong. I will be there to love myself every day of my life. There is more to me than this body you see. I know that I am beautiful, brilliant, kind, wise, full of empathy and industrious. All this while, I lost myself because I placed myself what in what you and other people chose to see. The scales have fallen from my eyes and I can see clearly now. I love myself enough to know that we don't deserve each other. Adishwa's words angered Tunde, and just before he stormed out, he said, If you let me live here without an apology, you will regret it. Adishwa didn't budge. She was tired, and her mind was made up. Don't ever come back begging, because I will never listen to you. Those were Tunde's final words as he stormed out in anger. Adishwa was surprised by the sense of peace that enveloped her. For the first time in a while, she felt at peace with herself. She wasn't sure she would ever find another handsome prince, but she had decided that she would never allow herself to be treated poorly again or let others' opinions dictate her self-worth. A newfound confidence emerged from within her and she realized that what mattered most was the kind of person she was and how it reflected in her actions. Adeshua, who was once very self-conscious, transformed into a confident and outgoing young woman. She embraced the idea that she only had one life and decided to live it to the fullest without being worried about what people thought about her. She used to be scared of drawing attention to herself out of fear that people would comment about how unattractive she was. But it didn't matter to her anymore. She got the best dresses made for herself, wore the hairstyles she liked, and indulged in beauty treatments just like other princesses. She went out and engaged in activities she enjoyed without worrying about what people said about her. Adishwa began to draw a lot of attention and she became a source of inspiration to people of her kingdom. She was admired and soon became known to be the princess with both beauty and brains. And soon, all girls in the kingdom wanted to be like her. As some of the finest princes began seeking her hand in marriage, her parents urged her to make a decision quickly before her luck ran out or the suitors changed their mind. However, she replied with conviction, I will take all the time that is needed and the right person will stay. For me, it's better to be single than to be with someone who doesn't know my real value. I am not scared, neither am I in a rush. Like and subscribe.